They don't love us, no they don't love us. They don't love us, no they don't love us. They don't love us, no they don't love us. They don't love us. Somebody tell them wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Somebody tell them wake up. Wake up. Wake up. We gon' tell them. Somebody tell them wake up. We gonna go ahead and jump right into it. Hey, pull up that for me. I had a um, the definition of race, Merriam-Webster. Let's pull that up. The definition of race, Merriam-Webster. Right. The right. definition of race. Uh huh. Definition one: Any one of the groups that humans are often divided into, based on physical traits, regarded as common among people of shared ancestry. Mm, okay go down that the, I have an issue with that definition for one reason one reason only remember the children of Israel as the sand of the sea and we scattered amongst all nations our foremother Esther they couldn't tell she was a Jew she had to basically admit it you know what I'm saying like a couple of our forefathers had to admit that they were Jews some of them were fair complexion when I say fair complexion I mean smooth skin whether they were dark or light skinned it Right, but they were still Israelites. You even got brothers today. That's right. That are very, 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 very light skinned amongst us. That you might almost think that they are so called white man, Edomite, right? And they may be from the Northern Kingdom or even amongst us in the tribe of Judah, right? So, the, with the physical trait thing, I understand what they're saying, but at the same time, we know biblically we can't look at a person and say, "Oh, you not Israel, or you not of this race," based off how they look, right? I think. Esau called that phenotype and, gen and genotype, right? We're going to get into that today, too. So let's go to the next definition. Break that where it says also. Go back. Also, the fact of... Also, the fact of dividing people or of people being divided into such groups. Uh-huh. Categor categorization by race. So categorize... Cat I'm jacking that all up. I'm butchering that thing. Categorization by race. So that's why when you fill out a job application, they'll say... You white, Hispanic, they, do they have Native Indian on there? I ain't filled out job application, job application in a while. Um, that They may have Native Indian on there. Yeah, I know they have Native black American, on there, Native Jewish, non-Latino, certain things like that. Indicator, key indicators of what race you might fall into, right? Categorization, right? Go back. Uh, yeah. A group of people sharing a common cultural, geographical, linguistic, or religious origin or background. Once again, if I'm raised in Catholicism in South America then I'm, and I'm speaking Spanish, once again, it still doesn't give me a clear definition of race. This is just telling me where I'm located or where I was born. When slavery happened, we were scattered in these different nations. So once again, this definition does not truly describe what race is according to God. That's what I want to show you. Esau is going to give you definitions on the concept of race, but God has a completely different concept of race, right? And we're going to get into it. Keep going down. Let's see another definition. See if they get a little closer. Archaic. The descendants of a common ancestor. Mm. A group sharing a common lineage. I like that better. Right. Message. Y'all like that definition better? Right. I right, like that definition yeah. better. Yes, that definition sir. better right there speaks more to what the Bible is truly speaking of, right? That's right. So with that being said, let's drop that. So the concept of race according to God is one that has been confused over time, whereas one time on the earth it was always known what it exactly was. What was race according to God, right? So let's get into it today. But let's start off with Acts 17, 26. And if y'all officers got anything, uh, let me know. Jump in. Acts chapter 17. Let's start at verse 26. This is a common scripture Christians use because somebody poured it on me the other night on Clubhouse. I was like, oh, I see you, you sly devil, you. I see what you're trying to do. I see what you're doing the there. This? <laughs> oh, yeah. So Acts 17, 26. The book of Acts chapter 17 and verse 26. Go ahead. And have made of one blood all nations of men. 
Go ahead. For to dwell on all the face of the earth. Go ahead. And have determined the times before appointed mm. and the bounds of their habitation. Read that one more time. You tell me what scripture you think this goes with. Read that one more time. And have made of one blood all nations of men. You hear that? Have made of one blood all nations of men. So this is where the Christian pastor get to pop in his hands. <laughs> You see that, brother? You see them Israelite brothers? <laughs> I told you. One blood. Yeah, we know that. We know everybody came from Adam. We ain't do, we, have we ever disputed that? Right. Have we ever said that it was other people on the earth, do you understand, that that was uh, beside Adam and that other people came from them? No, we never said that. We never said that. But they'll use this scripture to try to say that we're saying that one that all nations are not made of one blood. Right? So it says they have made of one blood all nations of men. Read. For to dwell on all the face of the earth. For to dwell. Think about it. For to dwell on all the face of the earth. Go ahead. And have determined the times before appointed mm. and the bounds of their habitation. And ha wait a minute. Have determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Hmm. What does that sound like? Deuteronomy chapter 32. Bring it out. In verse 8. Do that. Don't know what that sound like? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, let's see. Yes, sir. Let's see. Deuteronomy 32, verse 8. We ain't, we not disputing that everybody come from Adam. <laughs> we even know a scripture in the edges tell us the same thing. Right. Bruce got the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and verse 8. Come on. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance. Read. When he separated the sons of Adam. Wait a minute. What did the Lord do? When he separated the sons of Adam. God separated, separated, separated the sons of Adam. That's do it. right. He set the bounds of the people According to the number of the children of Israel. He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Meaning they couldn't get there. They appointed land until the children of Israel land was already carved, already That's paid. Right. Right. Which we know they land our land too. Because the world was made for us. Get that in 2nd Edward 6. We know the world made for us, so they land really ours. Yes, right. But the most sir. I said that, hey, I set the bounds of the people according to the children of Israel. The Lord separated the sons of Adam into what? Different racial categories. Now you may say, well, how did they all come from Adam? They measured or shaped into different races or categories. This is why the most high calls the nations two things. Israelite, Gentile. There's no, do you, do you read any other thing? No. The most high says Israelite, and then everybody else in this one group over here. Although they are different races, they come from different fathers. You understand different, uh, you know, complexions and different uh, facial features, different areas that they live in based on what we just read here. But they all are considered Gentile in the eyes of the Most High, meaning what? Heathen or nations, right? Let's read that. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 6 and verse 55. Go ahead. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord. Read. Because thou madest the world for our sakes. The Lord said he made the world for our sakes. Read it again. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. Read. As for the other people, which also come of Adam. So the Bible says, and after thee, and after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy, cre pre all thy creatures, of him come we all. Everybody come from Adam. We understand that. We're not, we not disputing that. That's right. And the peace people also whom thou has chosen. So you see clearly what God separated and gave a distinct difference between the son, all, this, all the people that come from Adam and then this chosen lineage of people, this special people. And that special people, we know who they are, right? Isaiah 44, verse 1. So the Lord made the world for our sake, right? And we're going to come back to second. I'm pretty sure somebody else is going to want to go back to second address, uh, chapter 6 as we go on through the lesson or through the show. Feel free to do so. But let's read Isaiah 44, verse 1. The book so it says, also, also the people whom thou hast chosen. Right? Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 44 and verse 1. Go ahead. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant. Jacob, my servant. And Israel, whom I have chosen. Wait a minute. Who the Lord choose? And Israel, whom I have chosen. What, what, what more proof do the Christian apologetics need? What are you, Christian? Because I know you watching. Because you watch all our shows every single day, every single night. That's you watch right. our bishop. Bishop has been tearing you up in the, in the history over the last what year? Right. During yes, the pandemic, sir. Bishop, shout out Tuesdays. 
Right. Everybody been watching him. Now I remember back in the day, people kind of just because he was just it was just his shot that he do it on Facebook. When he turned that thing to a whole a whole hour, two hour episode, people started being like, "Dog, it's so much history coming out." That's why they say, "Have you been keeping up with the shout out Tuesday? Have you been keeping up with the shout out Tuesday?" Because it's so much history, leadership, and Bishop been bringing out right Deacon Ithon's classes. You're not finna fool us. We well equipped. We well equipped now. That's we can read right. now, Master. You understand? <laughs> so what we reading right here it says in Edris. Everyone come from Adam, but also there's a nation of people God chose. The nation of people God chose are the Israelites. You understand? Can you read verse 2? Verse 2. Thus saith the Lord that made thee mm. and formed thee from the womb. Go ahead. Which will help thee. Which will help thee, thee, thee. Talk about a thee. It says who? Read. Fear not, O Jacob. O Jacob. Go ahead. My servant. My what? My servant. Read. And thou Jeshurun. Whom I have chosen. Wow. And thou just run whom I have chosen. You got to ask yourself, why the Most High got to put so much emphasis? Why he got to disrespect them like that? Mm. Why, they, why he got to love us so much and not, like, not love them? What they mad right. for? This is why they mad. This is why they gave you a different religion. This is why they gave you Christianity. Right. This is why they shoot you in the streets. This is why when they, when they, anytime you bring up slavery, they call you racist. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. What the hell is Hold this? Up. Let's stop. Let's stop for a second. I'm racist because I'm pointing out the things that you did to my people. What? So you just want to do what you did to my people and I not say anything about it. I just be closed lip about it. Huh? That makes no sense. No sense. The Bible tells us as prophets go out and show Israel their transgressions. That's right. That's what we was called to do. Right. So that's what we have to do, right or wrong? That's right. That's what we got to do. We got to point out who the Lord chosen people are. They are the Israelites, right? So the concept of race in the eyes of the Lord we see is about the children of Israel and then other nations. Now, yes, for a sir. second, pull up a screenshot of genealogy for me. Genealogy. Genea Let's read that out. Yes, sir. Genealogy. A line of descent traced continuously from an ancestor. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. A line of descent traced continuously from an ancestor. Can we read some of those synonyms? Because we're going to read ancestor in the Bible tonight. That's right. We're going to read all these different um, terms that you're reading. Let's, let's That's right. read that for me. Synonyms. Pedigree. Whoa. Wait a minute. I'm confused. That's what pedigree mean? It means ancestry? Uh, it means genealogy? Bloodline. Bloodline. There you mm. go. Go ahead. Ancestry. Mm. Descent. Mm. Lineage. Wait a minute. Go ahead. Line, family tree. Family tree? I'm confused. <laughs> I'm perplexed. I don't understand. Go ahead. Extraction. De Der derivation. Derivation. Origin. Origin. Heritage. Heritage. Wait a minute. <laughs> Go, keep going. Keep going. I'm sorry. Parentage. Mm. Paternity. Birth. Family. Family. Dynasty. Go ahead. House. Whoa. Don't we read that in the Bible? Don't we read the word house in the Bible? Right. Go ahead. Race. Wait a minute. There you go right there. Race. Race is the same as genealogy, pedigree, ancestry, descent, lineage, um, house, family, stock, That's breed, right. bloodline, blood, history, background, roots. <laughs> Go down to the next definition right there. Hey, officer, see, Go you ahead. can't break it down like that because when you break it down like that, it's too plain. Oh. They get to saying, I don't understand. Wow. I don't, I don't know what that means. Mm. But they understand Bitcoin. <laughs> they understand uh, uh, athro, uh, anthropomorphosis. Right. Right? Uh, corporal. I'm like, these words I've never heard. Exegesis, isogesis. They understand all that. But you can't understand race, lineage, family, blood, blood. stock, bloodline. You don't understand that, though. Descent, ancestry, pedigree. You don't understand that. Right? Oh, okay. All right. Get ancestry real quick. You know what I want? Leviticus 26 and 45. Let's see if the word ancestors is in the Bible. Hmm. You got something? Bring it out also, uh, Hosanna. Leviticus 26, 45 for me. Yes, sir. The book of Leviticus, chapter 26. And verse 45. Read 44 for me. Verse 44. Read Go ahead. And yet, for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies. So when the Israelites go into captivity, the they is the Israelites. Right? Go ahead. 
I will not cast them away. That sounds like what Paul said. Has God cast away his people? God forbid. That's Read. Neither, neither will I abhor them. Read. To destroy them utterly. So the Lord said he wasn't going to destroy the whole seed of Israel. Read. And to break my covenant with them. Go ahead. For I am the Lord their God. Wait a minute. Bruh. Bruh. Somebody look up there for me. T-H-E-I-R. Let's see what that means. Because we got to break stuff down to the simplest form for the Negro. Because the That's Negro right. loves his master so much that he'll see basic English words and he'll say that's not what that means. I'm going to tell you what happened last night. Real quick, quick story. You know I like my stories. <laughs> last night I'm listening in the clubhouse. One of the captains is dealing with a brother, right? He pulled Acts 7.55 where it says that Stephen looked up and saw Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And he said, brother, is that two people or one? The brother said, that's one person. You can't, you can't make this up. <laughs> Damn. He said, yeah, that's one person, and here's why. What? I don't want to hear why. It said Jesus standing on the right hand of the Father. Two different entities, two different people, two different spirits, two different men. That's but right. But you're going to tell me, oh, no, that's everybody. That's, oh, no, excuse me, that's one person. You Bro, what are you simple. talking about, so man? So he had to lie to himself to make himself feel good. Bro, <laughs> he could not be wrong. That's the pride of Christianity. Mm. Stay prideful. So let's look up there to that, make him feel better. Go ahead. Yes, sir. There. Belonging to or associated with the people or things previously mentioned or easily identified. <laughs> Belonging to right. or associated with the people or things previously mentioned as easily identified. In other words, they're saying this simple. I shouldn't even have to write a definition for this. But for the Negro that hate his people and love the so-called white man, let's break it down for him. Go back to the scripture. Yes, sir. It says belonging to or associated with. When somebody put T H E R, that means that's yours. Right. Right. You got to take that word into the Hebrew. Right. <laughs> you got to take it to the Hebrew. Let's go to the archaic right. Hebrew. Right. Ark. <laughs> Hell no. We ain't going to no Hebrew. We're going to read this right here. That's <laughs> right. What you got? Yeah, read 44 again. Yeah. Verse 44. Three. And yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away. Neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly. And to break my covenant with them. With them? For I am the Lord, their God. So God belongs to the Israelites. Right. We yes, belong sir. to the Lord. Right. That's Romans right. 9 says the adoption and the promises and the covenant and the glory and the giving of the law, <laughs> it all pertain to us, belong to us. He said, I'm their God. Right. Right? But oh. there are other races on the earth. Right. Can I get right. something on that? Yeah, house? go ahead. Bring it out. Get Joel 2 and 7. 2 and 27. Joel 2 and 27. Because you got to be crazy to see where it says, I'm the Lord, their God, gotta Israel is my people. Oh, we got a caller. And you still want to deny this. After Read the script. That. Go ahead, Austin. The book of Joel, chapter 2 and verse 27. Uh -huh. And ye shall know. That I am in the midst of Israel. So mm. the Most High God said, I am in the midst of Israel. Anywhere where the Israelites are, that's where the Most High is. Read. And that I am the Lord, your God. No, nah, he's everybody God. And I am the Lord, your God. Brother, that's your interpretation, brother. Mm. Read and, and that I am the Lord, your God, and none else. Ooh. So he says, I am the Lord, your God. And he said, just in case you want to be simple. I'm your God. Oh and my God. None else. You can't get past that. How you get past that? I mean, how you get past that? I don't know. I'm confused. <laughs> I'm confused. I don't understand. Maybe I ain't that smart. But what you just read out the Bible, he said, I'm the Lord, your God. Right. Is that that's the same possessive um pronoun that we just read in there? Right. right. The Lord their God. Oh, no. Christians will read this and then say, oh, no, uh, neither Jew nor Greek. What? Huh? <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> and let's let the call hey, in real bro, quick. Come on We got a call pretty early today. 22 minutes in, come we got a call. Come on, man. Hey, so, Carla, you on with Escaping the Plantation 2.0. Who we speaking with? Hey, man, thanks, thanks for picking up my call, bro. No problem at all. How you doing, brother? What's your name? Uh, Zay, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you good. What was your name again? Zay. Zay? Yeah. Okay. I'll praise to the Most High. What's your question or comment? Okay, man. I got man. I got so many questions, man. You guys do a good job at breaking down things. So, I wanted to ask you about. Um, do you guys subscribe to uh, 
to the, I guess the, the spirits of I guess the devil, Satan and Lucifer all being three different entities. Do we? Ooh, or are they all the ooh, same ooh. person? Um, I tell you this. Try to stay on topic because that's a another class, right? That's gonna take us way off where we are right now. But there are classes on that, right? If you go into YouTube, you type in IUIC, type of Lucifer, type Satan, type all those things, there'll be classes Bishop and the, and the deacons have done and captains pertaining to that particular topic. But do you have another question that's pertaining to what we're going over right now? Yeah, I mean, well, uh, you guys are talking about the Lord. God, could you break down to me the, uh, was it First John 2 about God being the God of the, the whole world? Mm, mm. Yeah, we went over that. Somebody called and asked about that a couple weeks ago, didn't they? Yeah, we'll deal with it, brother. I'll praise to the Most High. Just because it goes kind of with what we're going over today about God's concept of race. So, yeah, we ain't got no problem going into that. Um, let's read that. Let's read First John 2 and uh, read verse 1. Appreciate it, bro. We're going to answer your uh, question for you. I'll praise to the Most High. Thank you. Shalom. Um, you can go ahead and hang it up. We'll, we'll answer this question. First John 2 and 1. The book of First John, chapter 2 and verse 1. Go ahead. My little children, these things write I unto you. Go ahead. That ye sin not. Mm -hmm. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Jesus Christ the righteous. Go ahead. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So this is the, the hang up. This is where a lot of our brothers and sisters in the Christian church get hung up. They read this and they hear us speak about how, or show scriptures how Christ died for the Israelites. Then they'll read this and they'll fall back to sleep. They'll say, well, I understand what y'all are saying and I want to join, but there's certain things I'm hung up on. Why does it say he also need not, he died not only for, our, not only for us, but also for the sins of the whole world. Give me John 7, 35. I'm going to show you what this means, right? Let's get John 7, verse 35 real quick. If y'all also want to jump in on this topic too, y'all can jump in on this yes, particular sir. question. Uh, John 7, verse 35. The book of John, chapter 7 and verse 35. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go that we shall not find him? Will he go and Unto the dispersed among the Gentiles Read. And teach the Gentiles Notice the wording Will he go to the dispersed Among the Gentiles And teach the Gentiles There will be no Point for them to mention The first Gentiles if the second Gentile Wasn't the same or what, what I mean, what was different? You understand? So the first Gentile he mentioned are the, are the other nations that the Israelites Are scattered amongst the second Gentiles are the Israelites that follow those customs. And we're going to show you. Go to Ezekiel 22, verse 15. This is why he mentioned not for our sins only, but the sins of the whole world. Notice in John 7, 35, it says, Sit, then said the Jews among themselves. Meaning what? Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. The southern kingdom of Israel are now asking or saying, is he going to go to the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach those Gentiles of our people, let's read the disperse real quick. Uh, what I say, Ezekiel? Yes, sir. Twenty-two, fifteen. Come on. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 22 and verse 15. Read. And I will scatter thee among the heathen and disperse thee in the countries. Go ahead. And will consume thy filthiness out of thee. And will scatter thee among the heathen. The Israelites were scattered among the heathen. James 1 and 1. One more. Because it's, it's not real hard. To understand, it's just that when we still got Christianity on the brain, we can still be tripped up by certain words such as Gentile, world, so on and so forth. But when you read the scripture precept upon precept and you understand the history of the Israelites, it makes it clear. Read what you got. The book of James, chapter 1 and verse 1. Read. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes. To what? To the 12 tribes. To the 12 tribes. Tribes, read, which are scattered abroad. What's that word? Scattered abroad. Dispersed, scattered, same exact word. Means the exact same thing. The Israelites were dispersed or scattered among the Gentiles. It says, it says scattered what? Abroad. Abroad. Abroad meaning what? Different nations. Europe, right? Throughout Africa, throughout uh, Asia, throughout India, now in the Americas, Canada, Hawaii. South America, the Israelites are scattered 
amongst all nations right. on the planet Earth. This is why the Lord said, I can't just die. I didn't just die for the Jews. I died for all 12 tribes, the whole world. You understand? And that's where the confusion comes in. We don't understand the history. You had some also, Zanna? Just, just to take it back off you Yes, sir. Bit. Go ahead. Yes, uh, sir. Can you, can you go back to John? Yes. Uh, chapter 11. And we start at verse 45. Real quick. The book of John, chapter 11 and verse 45. Go ahead. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. So, the, so it says, then many of the Jews which came to Mary. So these are the Jews, it's the southern kingdom that, that's, that's being referred. So jump down to verse, to get straight to the point, go down to verse 50. Verse 50. Nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people mm. and that the whole nation perish not. So just like you read in 1 John 2 and 2, it said that the, the, the whole world, right? Right. So it says that uh, he must die and the whole nation perish not. Meaning he ain't come just for the Jews. Right. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead. Skip down to 52. Verse 52. And not for that nation. No, read 51, 51. 51. Yeah, 51. 51. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. Read. And not for that nation only. So not only for the Jews, read. Right. But that also he should gather together in one, the children of God that were scattered abroad. They were, they were, the officer was going into the, the so-called Gentiles, the, the northern kingdom that was scattered abroad. The whole nation of Israel. That's what First John two and two is about. When it yeah. says the whole world, I meaning they're not the Jews only, but the whole nation of Israel. Hey, like, stay in John. Go to ten sixteen. Same thing you just brought out. Also, all these precepts allude to the Israelites. You know, it's just that we have not been truly taught that's properly right. regarding Scripture. Right. So John ten sixteen. Watch the what book, Christ said. The book of John chapter ten and verse sixteen. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. See that. Other sheep I have which are not of this fold. When Christ went to the Jews, when Christ was on the earth, he went to the Jews. He sent the apostle Peter later on to go speak to Cornelius. And then he established Paul to go teach the northern kingdom and the Israelites that were keeping Gentile customs who were known as Gentile. But when Christ was on the earth, he went to the Jews. Right? Go ahead. Them also I must bring. Them also I must bring. Read. And they shall hear my voice. Read. And there shall be one fold. One fold. And one shepherd. And one shepherd. That one fold is all 12 tribes. That one shepherd is Jesus the Christ over both tri both the northern and southern kingdom of Israel. That's right. So when he said, I didn't die for the sins of the Jews only, that's why John said us, meaning southern kingdom. He didn't just die for us. He died for the sins of the whole nation of Israel. Remember. That's right. The sin, for, the sin of idolatry. What had to happen? If you committed idolatry, what happened? You got put to death. Right. The whole nation, the whole northern kingdom committed idolatry. But God established a promise with who? The all 12 tribes of Israel that he established with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So could God kill off and destroy or annul that promise that he made to Abraham? No. He couldn't do it. Because he had already promised him. The Lord not going to break his own scripture. Right. So what he had to do? He had to send his son to die for the northern kingdom because they was in idolatry and they would have had to die under the old covenant. Right. That's why he said not for the sins of the Jews only, but also of the whole world. And you know what? We can break that down like 20 different ways. Right, right. right. Go ahead. You can got some? Go ahead. Oh, crazy. Uh, yeah, let him get it. Uh, uh, Hosea 1 verse 10. Like Hosea uh, chapter 1 verse 10. 10 and 11. Y'all make sure y'all loaded up with these scriptures y'all getting, because y'all gonna go up against some, some Christians that's gonna bring this out on y'all. They're gonna put they're gonna use 1 John 2 and 2 to trip you up. Don't get tripped up. The book of Hosea, chapter 1 and verse 10. Uh -huh. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. So the children of Israel are gonna be as the sand of the sea. You, they cannot be numbered. That's a world right there. That's a nation right there. Keep reading. Which cannot be measured nor numbered. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass. That in the place where it was said unto them, you are not my people. So in this place in America, they call us African-American. Mm. They call us uh -huh. colored, black, Negro, uh, Native Indian, uh, Hispanic. Yep. 
Puerto Rican, so, so on and so forth. Right. Read on. There it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. Read on. Verse Damn. 11. Then shall the children of Judah. This is future prophecy. Then the children of Judah. Read. And the children of Israel. And the children of Israel, northern kingdom. Be gathered together. They're, we're going to be gathered together. That's what you see happening today. We're, we're being gathered. We're gathering ourselves together like Zephaniah 2 and 1 says. Mm -hmm. Read on. And appoint themselves one head. That one head is, is the, uh, Jesus Christ. Read on. That's right. And they shall come up out of the land. For great shall be the day of Jezreel. So how do you get all people out of that? Mm. How do you get know. all nations out of that? Right. right. You got southern kingdom and northern kingdom of Israel. That's it. We going to gather ourselves you. together. We not gathering with Edomites, uh, Esau. We not gathering with Moabites. We not uh, gathering with Ammonites. We not gathering with nobody else. It's just yeah, us. Nah. Right. Right. Hey, you know what? That's why I wanted. To, I was willing to answer this question right. because it goes in the context of what we're going over—the concept of race to God. As you see, the race that God says is superior to other races, and the only race that God sent His Son to die for are the Israelites. Right. Right. It's it's very specific. Right. That's you gotta, you right. Scripture. Go ahead. Yes, we'll move on. Give me um John eighteen and twenty. All praises. Because you got to understand when it talks about the word world. It has many different meanings. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know in what context he's talking about it, you'll be confused. And then you'll get to talk about, man, the Bible contradicts itself. Right. Read. The book of John, chapter 18 and verse 20. Read up. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. Uh -huh. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort. And this is in red writing. He said, look, I spake openly to the world. Whether the Jews always resort. So you got to understand what the word world means. And I'm just going to cut it off there. But you can go to um, John 17 and 9. And that will tell you what world he's really talking about. Right. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.